¿Cómo están? Um, everybody, hello, good morning. Um, looks like this is not a, a conference, it's rather a party. I see so many known faces. I'm just waiting to the quinceañera crossing that door any moment now. So I am really glad to be here, and thank you so much. And uh, first and foremost, thank you to the organizers and uh, 3M for inviting me. The committee also is uh, part of uh, this uh, uh, invitation as well, so thank you everyone. And uh, I am Rodolfo Gutierrez, and uh, many of you already know me. I am the executive director for Hispanic Advocacy and Community Empowerment Research. We do research as a way to live, but also we do research because we believe that research and information change things. So that's why we are committed in Minnesota to uh, discover what we need to discover and talk about it. And um, that's why I, I'm here, because I think uh, we so many times talk about Latinos, but we don't really know Latinos. We don't really know about them more than what we know about our friends, perhaps about our uh, closest ones, but we don't know much beyond. So many times we are talking about uh, poverty and, and uh, many other kind of um, discrepancies and uh, differences, but we don't really know that very much. So what we are trying to do recently in ACER is to bring that up front for us to know, uh, forget that, and to work together in changing it, because we need to change it. And that's what I want to uh, talk about today. So I am from this small city, uh, one of the smallest cities in the world, actually the biggest one, Mexico City in, in Mexico, um, where you get lost easily just turning around the, the corner because you don't know how to come back home. But it's beautiful because you interact with a lot of people, a lot of uh, differences, a lot of uh, different people around your, 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 your life. And uh, I believe this is the most beautiful city in the world. And that's me, certainly. Uh, but uh, we are part of a very large community of uh, people who are um, migrating to the United States. So, um, so many, many Latinos are living in, in Minnesota today. And perhaps we see uh, many, many people in the streets now as uh, we didn't see in the past. When we arrived here, my family and myself, to Minnesota just uh, to study at, at the university for our PhDs, we barely see a Mexican store or Latino store anywhere around. Today, we see stores almost everywhere. And Latinos are wherever you go. At least you find one Latino in every county you visit in Minnesota today. In the past, it was not true. Even in, in, in uh, International Falls, who's living in International Falls, you'll find some Latinos living in there. <laughs> and that is, that is amazing. So uh, today, uh, perhaps uh, we are uh, asking always, how many Latinos are in Minnesota? And so many people are telling us there are a million, a million and a half, two million people, because, yeah, we are noisy. We, we make a lot of noise, and uh, along the year, we do have a lot of celebrations, and everybody knows about that celebrations, and they come to our celebrations. So, yeah, that's why we are very visible. Uh, and all, one question is also prevalent. So how many of us are undocumented? And uh, that is always important. I do have a, a son. He was uh, participating at a debate team. And once he was talking about um, Latino undocumented students in Minnesota, and uh, one professor, a professor actually, asked him, how does it feel to be undocumented? And he said, I don't know. You better ask someone who is undocumented. I don't know about that. I am so sorry. <laughs> but this is disrespectful. He said that in front of everybody in, the, in, the, in that uh, debate. Today also we are trying to change the, the stereotypical images of Latinos. And we do have Robert Rodriguez. Everybody has seen the movies of Robert Rodriguez, of course. And uh, we do have superheroes who are kids and they are Latinos. And we do have also still these kind of images everywhere around where people are letting these notes. And this is from last year. Uh, we only tip citizens because the, the waitress was a Latina, born in the United States, therefore citizen, but the people assume they were not. But we do have new superheroes, La Boring Kenya uh, from Puerto Rico. She is amazing. Uh, you better know her. She's the best, one of the best um, superheroes. And recently, in uh, the most recent movie from Marvel, uh, Doctor Strange, we do have a Latina superhero that is not only Latina, but she knows how to cross borders 
with magic. So yeah, that is fantastic. So I am really amazed of that superhero. We also have Jane the Virgin. I don't know if you've seen her, but this is a three-generation family, and she is changing the stereotypical image because she's going for a grad, uh, a, a degree. That it is beyond anything else, even though the problems she's going through, being a mom and being single and uh, being rejected. So somebody already talked about who are the Latinos in the, in the United States today, and we are 62.1 million. And, um, we have the opportunity in the census today of identifying ourselves as Latinos. So and we also had the opportunity of choosing different races and all that, and that is something that calls my attention because when you see the number of uh, multiple races numbers growing, it's because of Latinos are uh, declaring ourselves multiple races. So um, we represent uh, also 52% of the entire population growth in the last decade in the United States has uh, already was mentioned here, and um, however, it's important to mention that 80% of the Latinos counted by the census are um, uh, citizens of the United States. Citizens by birth or citizens by acquisition. So many of us are transiting into the citizenship after migrating here, but 80%, I mean, that says two out of 10 are undocumented. And that is an important number if you add at the end but it is, an issue, uh, I'm coming back to what my son went through. Not everybody is undocumented. And Minnesota today, Latinos are the fastest growing population. It was amazing uh, how people were calling me to my, uh, after the census ended and presented the initial results. And they say, how does it feel for Latinos to grow that fast? Nice. Because we are, we are now more visible, certainly. And, um, as today, uh, we're in, in the state, the Latinos represent 6.1% of the total population, reaching up, up to almost 350,000 people. So that is really amazing. We are uh, now um, uh, the number, and I'm going to talk about that in the next slide, the number that it was um, projected by 2050. As you can see, in, uh, 10 years ago even, the projection was that by 2050, we were going to be 350,000 people. We are down. So when we see the projections, maybe the idea of 2040 as the moment in which whites were going to be the, not the majority is going to come faster than that. Today, two-thirds of Lat our Latinos that live in Minnesota, we are living in the seven-county area. So we are staying here in the Twin Cities areas because Los Tacos are más ricos here. <laughs> this is how the population, Latino population has grown. So the, I guess this is illustrating you how we are really growing fast. And recently it's more because of uh, what it's called in demography natural growth, which is by births and deaths, the balance, than immigration. Because immigration in the United States, in particular in Minnesota, has a little bit uh, slowed late, lately. But thank you particularly to the past uh, presidency in the United States. And now, uh, this is how the population of color is uh, composed in Minnesota. And you can see there um, in red uh, that we do have black population, but they are together immigrants and non-immigrants, black population. But if you s separate them as two different groups, because they are, if not, you can ask my friend from Kenya, who is not, he says, I am not African-American, I am African. So um, that way, uh, uh, Latinos are the most, uh, numerous population behind whites in Minnesota. Furthermore, uh, by origin until 2012, because we still need more uh, data from the census, uh, you can see that people from Mexico were the, the most numerous people coming from different origins. So from Mexico, we were the most. And now they say that Mexicans are taking back the world. I don't know, maybe Minnesota to start with. This is again uh, as of to 2017 by uh, uh, continents. And uh, in this particular situation, we see more uh, accelerated uh, uh, influx of uh, immigrants from uh, Asia, but still Latin America is a place of origin for many, 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 many people. In Minnesota today, uh, we do have uh, over or near 200,000 people who speak Spanish at home. That is a lot. 
So I invite you, if you are not a Spanish speaker, to go and come to our house. You are invited to mine if you want. Uh, and listen Spanish and interact with people in Spanish. That is really, really nice. It's a really good experience, as I did when I came to the United States and an American, at American families. So you learn a lot. I learned, I guess. I hope I never forget. Where we are, somebody was telling us about uh, the map before. And this is the map in 10, 2010. But I want to highlight here how things change. Because uh, uh, even though Nobles County, Wanton One, and some other counties are still on that level of uh, high percentage of population, uh, the numbers of the population in general are not that high. So uh, it is important just to give that kind of dimension. But yet, the presence of this population is so important for those towns, for those counties, particularly Washington City, over 30% of the population is uh, of Latino ascendants. So without them, Washington City just kaput. So this is 2010, this is 2020, where we see uh, counties such as Rice County and Rainbow County going up in the percentage of uh, population uh, of Latino ascendants living in there. That is something also to take into consideration. And also, you see at the end, among the 10 uh, uh, counties most populated by Latinos, we see there Ramsey and Hennepin in the ninth and the 10th places. That means that we are less uh, in percentage. Uh, important here in uh, the Twin Cities area, but we are still numerous. As I said before, we are mostly living here. But yeah, that is something that we need to know this is Lake Street, Mercado Central, the heart of the Latino life. And you should be there to know and understand what is going on with our Latino culture. And also, this is the composition of our population by countries of origin. You'll see Mexicans are there. But also are Puerto Ricans, Salvadorians, Ecuadorians, Guatemalans, Colombians, Hondurans, Cubans, and uh, you name it. Uh, I have a lot of friends from Colombia. I have a lot of friends from uh, Venezuela, and uh, it's important to know here that uh, everybody comes from with different conditions to this state. Uh, noting, uh, Venezuelans represent uh, the highest educated community in the entire state, even beyond, way beyond, high up than whites. So many Venezuelans are coming with uh, uh, master's degrees and PhDs. Unfortunately, they are not having the degree from here. They cannot uh, work as such. But they are the most educated population in the state of Minnesota. While people coming from uh, Ecuador, Mexico, or El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, are having the lowest, <laughs> the lowest degree, <laughs> uh, the lowest level of education in the state. So that said is like we need to look also the differences, not only by country or of origin, but also how we are coming here. If you haven't tried this, you don't know what it's like. <laughs> On one side, we do have a Mole Poblano, and uh, Amalia is here. She's a chef, so she knows about uh, food. And on the other side, we do have a Tlacoyo with uh, nopales. Everybody's afraid about nopales, cacto, but it's delicious. And that gives us a lot of uh, things to think about also. And you see, I have the commercials. But now, also, something, <laughs> something relevant for me is to talk about how uh, junk this population is. Uh, uh, by 2017, we don't have yet the, the entire data available for us to, to talk about it. But by 2017, 50% uh, of the population over 18 years of age are uh, born in the US, Latinos born in the US. While younger than 80, 18 years of age, 94.4. Almost everybody younger than 18 are U.S. born citizens. So we need to take that in mind, to keep that in mind. And the rest are a series of uh, graphs where we see the differences of uh, achievements in many different areas, education, housing, uh, insurance, and everything that it's important to work on. That these graphs are um, really illustrative. So, like uh, high school students graduating on time, Hispanic are very low compared to Asian and uh, whites, and, um, and the average also in Minnesota is uh, higher than, than what we do have. 
uh, high school students. Uh, this is another way to see it uh, with uh, lines, and we see that uh, we are not doing too, too well. So the, the light blue line is uh, near 60%. These are the people who have a bachelor's degree. If we take out uh, Venezuelans and Colombians who are living in Minnesota, then we go very, very, very bad with this indicator as well. Um, the ownership, the home ownership, and I do have here a very good friend also who does uh, sell houses or help people to acquire houses. Um, and um, we have still behind. We are still behind. We have a lot of problems uh, having this kind of culture of buying houses. Uh, many people rent houses because they don't have the, the access to uh, information as to how to buy them. And it's really important. It's an indicator of, of wealth, so that is why it's important for me. Health insurance, you see Hispanics are still, and this bar is kind of uh, tricky because uh, the actual uh, rates are very lower than that but we still have a low rate of insurance among Latinos. Uh, those who are being diagnosed with diabetes are um, high uh, compared to uh, the rest of the population. Asians, for example, are very healthy uh, diabetes-wise. Whites and uh, other races, uh, and sorry, and two or more races are um, compared to Latinos very, very well. And I want to highlight, and almost done, uh, this is a, a distribution of age by population. This is how it was uh, by Minnesota in 2010. I'm working on the new distribution pyramid of pop population uh, uh, still, but I uh, haven't had the data. But what is important is this is how it looks compared to distribution age between U.S. population in the front, or white population in the front, and Latino population in the back. As you can notice, we do have an uh, overnumber in, in young, young people. So we are a very young population. And the recent data from 2020 give us this. In blue, we do have the population by age um, being whites, non-Hispanics, and um, the uh, yellow are people of color. I don't know what it went there. Uh, so <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> but uh, it was to highlight the of color because we are younger than white population the white population are uh, becoming older and older and older. And the point is they are gonna need younger people to work for that elders, for those elders. Uh, and they are not investing on helping these people of color in doing better. So I hope these are uh, kind of um, indicators that uh, we need to change. You see uh, the natural change uh, for births and deaths uh, by 2060 is expected to recover, but guess what is going to be because of the people of color are going to have more children than whites. Because today, Latino, uh, whites in Minnesota are showing the lowest rate of reproduction almost in the entire country. So whites are not prone to have babies, while people of color we are, and particularly Latinos, we do have the highest rate of growth by birds. Um, because we are happier. <laughs> we like to dance, and we don't watch that much TV. Um, <laughs> I invite you to, to, to think about all these images as uh, showing us how different we are, but what we, also we do have a lot of in common, and we uh, need to uh, put that together when we, whenever we are designing any kind of approach to understand better our Latino communities and work for them, with them, and for the future, or not only of that community, but the entire state and the country. So um, these are facts that uh, I already talked about, just a summary, so that's why I'm going that fast. And I really appreciate your attention. And uh, as, uh, if you want, I'm gonna be here around for any questions. Thank you so much, and felicidades.